So Lewis is going to be creating his next artwork, a three-dimensional sculpture of myself. That's why you can see a, a piece of plywood behind me. And he's going to be coming in and telling you about that himself. Yeah, my name is Lewis Brown, and um, when I had uh, this, um, this art at this uh, city hall, that's how I met Linda. And um, since this art was like an invention, that's why we had a 26 page market report. <coughs> and, um, I'm, I'm going to do another uh, mirror size uh, of Linda and um, it's going to be done on, on plywood because uh, when people see this art they can see the energy comes out of this art like a heat wave like real power for heat wave that's how powerful this art is, because this is not the average regular art that, that people do on campus. And uh, on this uh, piece of plywood right here, this behind me on, on the side right here, that's where we're going to do a uh, portrait of Linda, three-dimensional portrait. And most people never heard of a three-dimensional portrait called Nature Stone. I wore the Cinderella shoes when Lewis and I got married. I'm in International Who's Who 2001 to 2002. National Register's Who's Who 2002 to 2003 and 2003 to 2004. And the Marcus Who's Who 2002 to 2003. I'm noted in my business, Lillimore Enterprises, as creative and business writer, and for film production, and as publicist and agent to Lewis Brown, and for my work with him at the Nature Stone Art Gallery, and in education at Harvard University and Framingham State College in psychology, media, and the arts, I noted. My children, Stacy and Danielle, are named. Lewis and I did lots of experimental video and work with the blind. This portrait of Lewis was done by George Trickle, a photographer who also did a professional shoot of Lewis's exhibit at Boston City Hall in 1994. He did this portrait in a shoot at his studio in downtown Boston to a Rolling Stones cassette. He captured him in two rolls of film. He wanted to do this portrait to follow Lewis's progress as an artist and to recognize him for his exhibit at Springfield Museum of Fine Art. George Walter Vincent Smith Museum on the Quadrangle. That's a dinosaur ice sculpture at the Boston Common. Scripture says, seek and you shall find, and in my house there are many mansions. This is truth. These are mansions of ice sculptures that Lewis and I found on first night at Copley Square, inspired by Aladdin and the Dolphin. Lewis was in the headline bar of the Taunton Daily Gazette. in an article called An Unusual Spirit's Unusual Art, which was published in the lifestyle section of the paper when we opened the gallery in July of 1998. Lewis and I were in the headline bar of the Brockton Enterprise newspaper when George and Sarianne, blind since birth, 
painted fans here at the gallery and worked with the art in a tactile manner. This one was the exhibit at the City Hall. Boston City Hall? And the, mm -hmm. the Museum of Fine Art in West Springfield. In West Springfield. Well, how long ago was it at, at Boston City Hall? For one, it was uh, it was done last, last, I mean, 19, 1994. Right, right. And it was a one-month exhibition? Yes. And it was a one-man exhibition? Yeah. Yeah. Correct? Great, great. And I understand that from that particular um, exhibit, you received a lot of interesting phone calls and yes. mail and people who were like really interested in this kind of concept of art because it is unique. Yeah. It's definitely unique. Very, very few artists, I'm sure, have tried this technique. And you've gotten a lot of, um, a lot of following as a result of that showing. Yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, when they had this down the city hall for that one month, that's how I meet uh, my agent, Linda Myers. Mm -hmm. That's when she came in, into the city hall and she saw it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was like a mind blow. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it is to me also. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Well, that's very good. We are going to speak to Linda shortly. And um, very shortly, we're going to go over into the studio. And we're going to talk more about where you have come from in terms of your art and the, your vision of where you're going and what you would like to see happen within the community and the community at large in terms of your art and um, children who would like to learn yeah. this technique themselves. Right. So thank you very much. Plus that we can get it international too. Yes, well, that's that yeah. goes without saying. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank okay. you very much. Space that we really need to, to um, make a lot of things out of this art because mm -hmm. that's like this art going to be growing and growing a lot of people like to do it a lot of students like to do it mm -hmm. i mean i know when uh, we had the space at roxbury community college mm -hmm. and the minute we brought it in there the, the students look like mm. they want to take it up and do it right right <laughs> yeah right. it seems yes it is hard and it is difficult but because an artist part of an artist's life is struggle you know, struggle to create the right kind of art, struggle to be able to be exposed to the media as well as to the public. Um, certainly those exhibits that they have done will certainly boost their, their push forward to be more exposed. Uh, certainly, it's a lot of, um, it's a difficult process to get art exhibited um, there is an acceptance process, it has to be juried in and it has to be accepted by the various visual arts experts that are involved. They have to do a complete evaluation and it, it's not easy. There's a lot of competition and uh, <coughs> it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very good. I saw Prince Charles at the 350th when I worked at Harvard. And that was from 1986 to 1989. I worked at the office of the university publisher right in front of Harvard Stadium. I also helped to bring in the Harvard Union of Clerical and Technical Workers. Harvard's a great place to work, but there were just a few things wrong, which led me to um, help the union to get in. And was assisted by one of the cameramen. I went to Framingham State College. I donated several of my films to the school through Dr. Heinemann. That's May Hall, where I took courses in art and literature. I took courses such as The Comic View, Essentials of Writing, Intro to Drawing, Two-Dimensional Design, Philosophy of Literary Criticism, and film history and criticism. That was with Dr. Arthur Noletti, where we learned a lot about opening montages by viewing a film a week. I studied intro to drawing and two-dimensional design with Steve Durkee, who founded the Museum of Modern Architecture in Wellfleet. 